Starting at the other forward spot, standing 6-7 from Georgia, number 21, Dominique Wilkins. Atlanta will try to run at every opportunity. Dominique on the break, gets a job. What a change. Third pick goes to Utah. Initially, what yeah. were you thinking? I wasn't going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to Utah. Y'all crazy. crazy going. Utah. And then they told me I'd be playing power forward. I like, uh, y'all nah. talking about at 210, 215. Mm. Not me. Let's rewind to 1982. The Utah Jazz selected Dominique Wilkins with the third pick in the NBA draft. Now on paper, this was a major win for Utah. Wilkins was an athletic powerhouse and pairing him with Adrian Dantley, who had just averaged over 30 points per game, seemed like a dream team in the making. But there was one big problem. The Jazz were in serious financial trouble, so much so that they couldn't even make payroll. Enter Dominique Wilkins, unknowingly about to save the Jazz from possibly going under. Behind the scenes, the Jazz were scrambling to stay afloat, and no one really knew about it. Former Jazz player Mark Eden once revealed that the team was so cash-strapped that they needed $1 million just to make payroll. The team's owner, Sam Batterstone, called the coach and GM Frank Layden and basically told him, we need cash, we need it right now. This is where the Wilkins trade came into play. The Jazz ended up sending Nick to the Atlanta Hawks in an exchange for John Drew, Freeman Williams, and mostly a million dollars. That million dollars quite literally kept the team in Utah, at least for a little while longer. Now, fast forward to today. Dominic Wilkins himself has shared how people still come up to him and thank him for saving the Jazz franchise. He told this story on the All The Smoke podcast, saying that Utah was in such bad shape financially that the trade money was crucial in keeping the team in Salt Lake City until they got new ownerships and fresh investments. At that time, you know, they were struggling, uh, Utah, to make payroll, you know. So the money they trade for really kind of helped for a short period of time until they got... Uh, new ownership and investments mm -hmm. with that team because yeah they were struggling financially and so you know people tell me all the time man you really helped save the franchise because they were gonna have to move well i mm -hmm. said well i'm happy for them but i'm glad I'm I didn't go there. Go there. but here's the funny part dominique had no intention of ever playing in utah he was set on playing somewhere else and utah's plan to use him as a power forward initially didn't sit well with him he joked by saying, y'all better trade me today because there was no way he was going to play at 210 or 215 pounds as a power forward. That just wasn't happening in his book. I wasn't going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. No, 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 no. I'm not going to Utah. Y'all crazy. crazy going. Utah. And then they told me I'd be playing power forward. I like, uh, y'all, nah. my at 210, 215, mm. not me. I said, y'all better trade me today. Mm. Luckily for Wilkins, his trade to Atlanta came through, and it was actually baseball legend Hank Aaron who pushed the Hawks to get Neek. Aaron apparently told the then owner Ted Turner to trade everybody you can to bring Dominique to Atlanta. And the rest is history as they say, and what history it was. Dominique went on to have a legendary career with the Hawks, a nine-time All-Star, a spot on the NBA 75th anniversary team, and countless unforgettable moments as one of the best scorers and dunkers the game has ever seen. Meanwhile, Utah made it out pretty well too. That extra cash kept them afloat, and they later drafted Karl Malone and John Stockton, who would go on to become one of the greatest duos in NBA history. So, in a strange twist, this trade worked out for both teams. Looking back, it's crazy to think that a million dollars, with all the money we see now, and a trade demand shaped the future of two NBA franchises. Dominique Wilkins got the career he wanted in Atlanta, and Utah stayed in Salt Lake City, where they built a contending team around Malone and Stockton. So whether you're a Jazz fan or a Hawks fan, this story just goes to show that sometimes things work out in ways you'd never expect they would. All right, folks, that's the story of how Dominique Wilkins saved the Utah Jazz without ever playing a single game for them. Did it end up being a win-win for both sides? You tell me in the comments. 
And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more upcoming videos and NBA content. My name is Damien Peters. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.